So finally, it seems, we get to the most maybe common way of that you might think of anyway. We, as our amateur meteorologists, think of describing water, water gas, water vapor in the air in terms of relative humidity or percent relative humidity. And um, in order to understand percent relative humidity or relative humidity, you needed to have understood this idea of saturation amount. The fact that basically, at um, depending upon the temperature, the the air can now the air does not hold water vapor, but there can only be so many so so much amount of water vapor in the air at a particular temperature before we reach saturation. So then, basically, relative humidity, or more commonly percent relative humidity, then is the the amount of water vapor in the air. Um, compared to, so that goes in the top, compared to the saturation amount, the amount of water vapor that would be in the air if the air were saturated with regard to water vapor. And then usually I'm going to go ahead and add 100 percent. Uh, usually to get it in parts per 100, we could take that ratio and multiply it by 100 percent. Where the closer you get to 100 percent, the more the amount of water vapor in the air is equal to the amount of water vapor at saturation. So basically percent relative humidity or relative humidity is a measure of how close the air is to becoming saturated with regard to water vapor. And once you reach saturation, we'll talk more about this important part of the hydrological cycle coming up, but once your air becomes saturated, then you're more likely to get um, the gas to go ahead and liquefy or condense. So the closer the relative humidity is to 100%, the more likely you're going to have for condensation to occur. So you can change relative humidity by either changing the amount of water vapor in your air, or you can monkey with the temperature. The thing about monkeying with the temperature of your parcel of air is remember that um, the, the amount of water required to reach saturation changes with temperature. Remember that table that we, that we looked at earlier, if you're listening to these parts in order? Um, we said that actually this number here that you look up on a table, as you decrease the temperature, oh sorry, from the table that was increase. As you go, as you increase temperature, remember that you also increase the saturation amount, okay? So that would change the bottom number. So either way, when you go ahead and do your division problem, you're changing relative humidity. So I have an example here. And remember I said a few slides ago, um, again, if you're listening to these in order, it was the part right before this, where if you look at that table right at um, 20 deg 25 degrees Celsius, the saturation amount the grams required to reach saturation in one kilogram of dry air is 20 grams. So in this particular example, and you're going to see kind of from three examples here, just take this scenario where you're at 25 degrees Celsius and you have five grams, not 20, but you have five grams of water vapor in there per one kilogram of dry air. Notice that you can take five divided by 25, sorry, 5 divided by 20 times 100% and you get 25%. So that's your relative humidity. You're at 5, you can hold 20, 5 divided by 20 is 25%. So let's go ahead and keep it at the same temperature. So we have the same saturation amount, 20, saturation is at 20 grams of water vapor for um, uh, 1 kilogram of dry air. Now notice we're going to go ahead and take that 10 grams, okay, put it in the top, divide that by the 20 because that's the saturation amount. 10 divided by 20 times 100% is 50%. So one of the things we talked about earlier that basically kind of like your terrarium, if you leave this system kind of to stew or equilibrate, then eventually um, you're going to go ahead and basically saturate that headspace, that air above the liquid water. And that's actually what we've done here in, in C here, because look at the uh, amount of water vapor 
in one kilogram of dry air, it's 20. So down here, to calculate relative humidity, we put the 20, which is what it is, for one kilogram of dry air. Divide by 20, because we got that number from the table, that's the amount of uh, water vapor that dry, one kilogram of dry air can hold at that temperature. So 20 divided by 20 is, times 100%, is 100%. So here, we definitely, we can say that that air is saturated. And we are at 100% relative humidity. So, relative humidity. As I mentioned, you can go ahead and if you increase the water vapor, then that's increasing the number on the top, and you can approach 100% relative humidity. Okay, ways that we go ahead and take a parcel of air and basically inject it with water vapor, for instance, is depending upon how long your showers are, when you take a shower, you are going ahead and converting, um, one way or another, some liquid water to water vapor. So you are basically um, increasing the amount of water vapor in your, in your bathroom. And you can go ahead and reach 100% relative humidity, and that gets you some fog oftentimes. Or you get condensation on your cool mirror, too. Not as in cool as in wow, but cool as in temperature-wise. Um, remember I said anytime you can see something kind of cloudy, that sort of thing, and you're like, oh, I know that water is causing that event. Think of water in its liquid or solid state. So, for instance, when you exhale on a cold winter day, what you are doing is taking that, that air into which you're exhaling, you're adding water vapor from your lungs. And depending upon then the temperature, you can go ahead and get 100% relative humidity just by exhaling um, warm, moist air. And so when you see your breath, you're seeing condensed water. Water that, uh, well, you're seeing saturated air. Um, and we'll talk more about a type of fog called frontal fog, but this is what's kind of being described here. When I get to this frontal fog, I always think of um, Adventureland, we go to a, an amusement park um, every summer, and one of the things about this advent Adventureland is they have black asphalt. I don't know why they chose black asphalt, but they have black asphalt uh, walkways. And so um, oftentimes when we go, it's nice and sunny, you know, and so that black we've talked about, and you already knew, that black things tend to... <laughs> you know, absorb radiation and, and get pretty darn warm. Well, let's just say, you know, in the summertime, they're notorious for kind of your isolated thunderstorms, you know, and which is kind of nice if you're Adventureland because then you're like, everybody goes home, you stay here, wait it out, and you get to ride the rides and there's no lines. But my point here is basically you have some sort of precipitation event and that precipitation event hits the hot black asphalt and then what happens is that liquid goes ahead from your rain, goes ahead and um, evaporates. So then above your black asphalt, I'll extend it over here, above your black asphalt, this is water gas, water vapor. Basically you have an extra dose of, of water vapor because of the being hot, precipitating, and evaporating. So this can reach 100% relative humidity. And remember, with 100% relative humidity, you think some sort of condensation is going to occur in this, in this case. So the next uh, thing I'm going to show you is basically um, uh, little uh, chambers of water at um, or isolated um, systems at three different temperatures. And I have 10, uh, 20, and 30, and I think that, I'm not sure that that's right, but just bear with me, if you will. <laughs> so here we have, um, we have a system at 20 degrees Celsius. Um, from that table, the previous table, if you look at the saturation amount, it would take 14 grams of water vapor per one kilogram of dry air to become saturated. So at this temperature, um, we basically have those seven grams, that's the amount of water 
the, in grams that is in one kilogram of dry air. 14 is our saturation amount. 7 divided by 14 times 100 percent is we have 15 percent, excuse me, 50 percent relative humidity. Well, if we go ahead and cool that down to 10 degrees, okay, notice we went ahead and it's isolated, so we didn't lose any water vapor. So when we go to calculate the percent relative humidity or relative humidity, notice now we'll put 7 grams of water vapor. And if you look at that table at that cooler temperature, 10 degrees Celsius, the one kilogram of dry air can only hold 7 grams. So you take 7 divided by 7, and at that temperature, you are right at 100% relative humidity. You are right at the saturation. Well, you might know what's going to happen. We're going to go ahead and cool it down even more and see what happens. If we cool it down another 10 degrees to 0 degrees Celsius. Now, if you look up on the table, at 0 degrees Celsius, the saturation amount is 3.5 grams of water vapor in one kilogram of dry air. So you're like, oh dear, I had 7, now it can only, the air can only hold 3.5. So that's why this diagram says, well, you go ahead and you'll stay at 100% saturated air, 100% relative humidity of that 3.5, but notice what's going to happen here is we get a puddle. We get 3.5 grams of water vapor condenses out to reach the, it's, it's a new equilibrium. So bottom line is that um, um, intuitively, you probably knew this, that when uh, the weather report um, says the percent relative humidity, the closer that gets to 100 percent, you're like, oh, that must mean we have a lot of water vapor in the air. And now you know specifically that's a lot of water vapor in the air relative to that temperature. So when you approach 100 percent relative humidity, you can expect some sort of condensation to happen. Condensation gives us our clouds, gives us our fog. Condensation also gives us our dew. And if it's cold enough, will give us our frost. I guess you'd probably call that deposition, though, wouldn't you? So how do you increase relative humidity? Well, you can increase the water vapor present. We talked about a couple of ways to do that, including your shower. Or you can lower the temperature of your system. And that's kind of like the example we looked at, where we take something at 10 degrees, cool it down to 20, and then cool it down to 0 degrees. We increase the relative humidity. So, um, I think this is kind of redundant. I'll go ahead and put it up there just in case you're kind of filling in your uh, blanks. But changing the relative humidity. One is to monkey with the temperature. And remember, when you're monkeying with the temperature, relative humidity, you're monkeying with that bottom number, the amount of water vapor that can be held by dry air at that particular temperature. Um, we're going to talk about different types of fog, and the fog that all kids like to wake up to in the morning is called actually radiation fog. And what's happening with radiation fog is, um, well, we said within the troposphere, we said that basically the, the geosphere acts as a mini radiator. And so what happens with radiation fog is basically your mini radiator peters out over the night. And so instead of kind of having this nice kind of warming effect, basically kind of have a, have a cooling right before dawn here. And then that cooling basically can lower the saturation amount, which increases your relative humidity. You can get condensation. You can go ahead and get those, those, that fog right there at ground level. So one last thing with regard to relative humidity before we move on to dew point temperature is this one. So you might recognize, maybe, maybe not, but this is like a strip chart sort of thing, where this one up here is looking at temperature over the course of from midnight to midnight, OK? Um, and it looks like each tick is an hour. So we talked, actually, about we, how we kind of have a delayed maximum temperature about 3 or 4 PM. This looks like, like it's showing about 5 PM, but a delayed of maximum. So um, our coolest temperatures here at dawn, 
Okay, it warms up, it warms up, okay, again, maybe 3 or 4, or in this case, 5 p.m., and then it starts to cool down again. So then this down here actually is looking at the same time frame from midnight to midnight, and now it's looking at percent relative humidity. Now, we can assume in this particular case that there is no, um, that the air is not being infused with any extra water vapor, nor is water vapor leaving. So the only thing that's going to change our relative humidity then is going to be um, the, 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 the fact that as it cools down, as the air cools down, the, the saturation amount will decrease. And as the saturation amount decreases, we increase relative humidity. So check this out. Let's go ahead and go up here at our maximum temperature for the, for the day. Okay. Notice our maximum temperature is our minimum percent relative humidity. And why that is, is because at higher temperatures, um, our saturation amount is, is higher. Okay. Then we start to cool down. Let's see, where's my thing? Start to cool down, and what starts to happen? Our relative humidity increases. Okay. And then we kind of talked before how our lowest temperature, if you're camping, you know this for sure, how your lowest temperature is right before dawn or right at dawn. Okay. So temperatures um, continue to fall um, approaching dawn, and that's why uh, as temperatures fall, it gets cooler, our percent relative humidity goes up. And so when are you going to feel kind of the most clammiest, maybe have some sort of moisture in your sleeping bag right before dawn? <laughs> okay. So this is kind of looking at the daily cycle of relative humidity and temperature.